When I'm out climbing, it's it's kind of the one time where I'm usually like not thinking about anything else. You're just very present. You know, you're just there. I love the mountains here. And I think one of my favourite things about Scotland is when you're on top of a mountain, you can't see the edge of the mountains and the mountains just go on for ages and ages and ages. I love the views, I love the, the positions you're in, I love the kind of freedom you have, the space, like both mentally and physically. It's going to be a cardigan. I've just started knitting it, but I'm very proud of my cable. You like twist, twist if the stitches and it makes pattern like plait. Started it when I was about 14 and then I knitted the last few pieces when I was about 24 <laughs> um, with about a seven year break in the middle. And then I decided it was all too big. So I pulled it out about two weeks ago and started to knit a new one. <laughs> So I'm a volunteer in the Oban Mountain Rescue and I have been since I was 19. I also climb a lot in summer and winter um, and that takes up basically all my free time. <laughs> That's basically all I do. I think in the UK mountain rescue is quite special in that it is voluntary. We're there because we want to be there. It's people who've just enjo enjoyed the outdoors themselves. They know kind of how how good and how special it is being outside. And they also know they have the skills that they can help people out. I've always loved maps. Like it's, yeah, I just love looking at them. They're so cool. So when I was doing my mountain leader assessment the night before, I went out for like some final night navigation practice with my friend and um, I didn't have the map of the area we were going to and he did but it was an old one so we got there and we, we were doing like some navigation points and it's like this is really weird none of it makes sense can't figure out why anyway it turned out the map was like 20 years old and they missed off like 50 meters of contours in a whole stream and so we were like oh well that makes sense now like no wonder I was getting lost There's a lot of different types of people in our team, so there's a whole bunch that do come from the marine lab. So we, we do sometimes joke about Oban having like the highest number of doctors in the team, but they're all like doctors of seaweed. <laughs> and it's meant that I've suddenly got this whole group of people that I can go out climbing with, you know, it just gives you so many more friends. I instruct uh, summer and winter hill walking, uh, rock climbing, co-steering and canyoning. It's really great working with young people and particularly young women because you're kind of in a position where you can be a role model for them and can show that women are more than capable to do this and that there are women that are doing it. I'm pretty passionate about getting more women into the outdoors. It can be a bit intimidating for women because up until now it is, it is really male dominated. It can be quite hard to find female specific outdoor clothing. There's men's mountaineering and women's walking or there's a picture of like a man climbing but the women's like sunbathing. Some women and some people have to customise the outdoor gear they have to, to make it work for them. It's still a bit of an uphill battle. So we've got strawberries 
in the summer. Kale, these are leeks. We've got chard, and then all along the back is our fruit bushes. And then over there, all these like weird twigs are Jerusalem artichokes. And what else? I'm sure there's, there's maybe potatoes over there. And I think that's all, pretty much like all our wintry stuff. I was kind of brought up vegan until I was about nine. And then as a family, we started eating dairy for a few years. Oh, there's a dog on the loose. Yeah, this is my mum. She was born in Africa, in Nairobi. Travelled about, went to India for a bit, came, went back to Africa and uh, then came to England when she was about the same age that I moved up here, wasn't it? I think it's really cool having that whole kind of side of, of my background, um, having the whole half of my family being Indian. You don't see a lot of people from, from minority backgrounds on the hill or climbing. You know, I look at all the climbing guidebooks and all the photos are of white people. <laughs> and it's just the reality at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's something I'd like to see a lot more of. Thirty years ago, you'd be able to winter climb from October right through to, to May. But now, even in January, you're getting big warm spells and a colder winter is exceptional. It does make me wonder how, how long winter climbing is actually going to be available as a, as a job. When I'm instructing, it's just really great to like share how untouched it is up here. Just trying to make sure that they realise these spaces are still there and there's still something to look after.